Hey there, I'm Chef Dennis, and today I'm here with Gene Layton for another in the series of the Hangouts we're doing on the Blogger's Guide to using Google Plus effectively. And uh, it's been a real big success so far. Uh, we've got a lot of great questions, and we've given you some information to help you have more fun on Google Plus because we both really love Google Plus. We drank the Kool Aid. Uh, we're loving life here, <laughs> and you know we want you to be happy like we are. So I'm glad you're here today. As usual, before we get started, if you have questions, leave them in the comment bar, and we will do our best to answer them. And actually, we're going to field a little bit more off-topic questions today if we get done with our hover card presentation uh, pretty quickly, which I, I think we will be. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned for those and you can ask some questions from the past episodes or anything else that's on your mind. And um, make sure you let your friends know about this. If they don't already, share the link, uh, share the series, let them know, you know, we're here to help them and uh, get them to enjoy the experience. So I'm going to turn it over to Gene Layton and uh, we're going to get started on hovercrafts. Hey, Gene. Hey, hi everybody. So we kind of touched on hover cards um, when we did the profile setup because they are intricately intertwined. But in case you didn't come to that profile setup, I'm going to go back in time a teeny bit. Uh, the definition of hover card is the information that comes up on the Google stream and 22 other places in the internet when somebody mouses over your image along with whatever post. So if you go through the home stream of what you've got coming from people and you push your little mouse over their picture, you're going to get their hover card. It's the profile picture along with their tagline, where they work, where they live, and it all comes out of their profile. So I'm going to go into screen share. Yeah, as soon as I can get it to do that. And we're going to look at my profile page. Uh, hmm. I'm sorry about the extra page there. Okay. Um, so my, excuse me, guys. This is the wonders of computers. They sometimes decide they want to talk to you. So I have gone in the right-hand column. I went down to my profile, and this is what we have. We've got the picture, and this area that's the blurred close-up of the pic main picture is what's the hover card. So my profile image, name, where I work, where I go to school, where I live, and if you go to the actual post I wrote about it over on wingwomanproductions.com, you're going to see pictures that I took, screenshots I took as I went along. So this is the hover card. And this is what happens when you mouse over my name in an event so, or, any, or anybody else's event. So I'm going to swing over to this is our event page. I reshared just a minute ago. But you can go over anybody's card. I'm just going to pick Laura. And you can see all of her information, what she does, where she lives, how many circles I have her in. And because I have circle count, there's some information that pops up as well. We're going to talk about circle count further on in our, our series. But in order to change what's on this hover card, you have to go into each individual place. So for tagline, you go into story. And the thing you have to remember about doing this change is that it has to be pretty short. Um, in the post, I talk about having a second window open so that you can make your edits on this tagline line and get it to fit on the hover card because otherwise you can actually have it fall off your card. And that's never an impressive way to do it. The introduction that happens doesn't show up anywhere else. So in some ways, you don't have to really put much in there, but for me, it's a convenient place to put the URLs of my two blogs. And then bragging rights, which we don't really care about in this case. The work pops into a blue, and this the work, the essential line of work is where you have employment. And you see I've got both my 
URLs as my employment, and then current needs to be checked. But when you go back to my hover card, you see Wing Woman Productions. It's a Google default that your most recently attended job is the one that shows up as current, even if you have them both checked off, which is what I do. But since I've been blogging since 2006 and I've only started Wing Woman Productions last year, that's the one that shows up. The Wing Woman Productions is what shows up on my hover card. So that's kind of an interesting way of manipulating which piece of information you want to have up. And then the next line down is your school. So you go to the little graduation cap and it's this first section this changing I have changing lives through information as mine and you again you have to make sure that you check this current box now this is a change from when we did the profile which was only three this is our fifth so four weeks ago it used to be that education would say attends and it would have that word before whatever you put. That has changed. Now, whatever you put is what's on the card. So you don't have to worry about trying to make a grammatical sentence with the words attends or attended any longer. You can just type in what you want. But keep it short. This is kind of like Twitter here. You know, 140 characters are roughly what you got and nothing more than that. So figure out what you want to say. It's even closer than a in amount than an elevator speech. And then the final one is where do you live? And this is where I put my actual town because I am geographically between Vancouver, BC and Seattle, Washington um, and not really close to either one, a couple hours from either one, so or an hour and a half. Um, so I put where I actually live so that brands and people who want me to come to events know that it means a drive for me. Um, you can put Pacific Northwest, I've seen that, I've seen Seattle area, I've seen you know any kind of geographic location that you might want. This is not the place to put Neverland or something facetious. Um, Google really does want to know where the heck you are. So. There's that. So that, it, when you edit all of that, and this is how you can, and I've got the snapshots of all the different things, you are all done at that point. That's your hover card. And what will happen is when you are in an event, I'm going to find me again. When you are in an event, it will show, oh my gosh, lots of people talking. Um, It'll pop up just like that as you are in the event or in a stream. It gives you a lot of information. And if you haven't connected with Circle Count and you're in any way curious about statistics, do that because they maintain the best statistics in the world of Google Plus. They and Cir Circloscope um, give you a lot of information to work with and even though I am not a stat watcher, it is really helpful when you mouse over something to see, okay, is this somebody with a ton of followers or is this a new person? Because that changes how I talk to people. You know, if I see somebody with 200 followers, I have to assume that they're fairly new in Google Plus and they may not have the depth of information available to them about the question they've got. So it gives a lot of information. It also tells you um, how important they are in their own country, which, I don't know, for some people that may mean something. To me, it's uh, just more stray information. So I'm going to unscreen share. And that's really it. That's a hover card. That's so let's go to some information that people need. <laughs> one thing uh, too I wanted to mention on the hover card, like we were talking about the uh, last one coming up first, and I had that problem, and I realized that if you uncheck one of them, one of the current ones, save it, 
then you can go back and check it again and the other one will, will become first. So if you have a problem with what's in that line and you want to change it, that's all you really have to do and that can let you manipulate your hover card a little bit more too. But you know, you really, it is important to use this because you know, I get so many follows a day and I don't get a chance to see them all, but I will hover over their name to see if they're worth looking at more. Okay, and then going to their profile to see. So, you know, sometimes your first impression is the only impression you're going to get to make. And I did see a place you can actually order business cards that look like your hover cards. And yeah. uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was from Moo that does it. I think it is Moo. They tend yeah. to be on the cutting edge, so. And they were really cool, so. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to say is, like all of my posts, I try and go back into my um my personal community, which is where I store information that I see on Google Plus and then push it back out. So down at the bottom of my post, there's a, a connection to uh, Jana Nystrom from Finland, who wrote a great Google post about circles. There's uh, Stefan Ho Hovanian's uh, post about hover cards, he's the man. <laughs> when you want to talk about hover cards, he's the one that first brought it to my attention and I think most of Google Plus's attention about how connected this piece of information really is. And then of course there's Ronnie Bincer who talks about circle count and I would make sure to go and check those three connections. Um, like everything in Google Plus, this stuff changes so rapidly that having the history as well as where it's moved to, to be able to know where it's likely to move on uh, is important. And please, please, please make sure you change your photo because the thing I use when I'm looking at a new person is if they haven't changed their default photo from that graphic rainbow, to me it's like they're not here yet because that's basic if you don't have even one photo to change out. And, and also, too, I know a lot of people are making these uh, compilation photos of their <coughs> images, and they're really great when you're on your home page and you're looking at them, but check how it looks on your, um, on your hover card, because sometimes those images really get lost. So, you know, it may not matter to you, but again, it's your first impression is, you know, it's an important one, and sometimes you have to pick a picture that blurs better than others will, because sometimes the blur just doesn't look right behind it. You know, I'm hoping Google would change that and just put a solid color in or, or do something else with it. Give us some default options to put something else in there that would blur better. Uh, but yeah, so think about your your appearance. Remember, this is your first your first impression to a lot of people, so the hover card is more important than you would think. It truly is. And uh, one thing I've noticed about Google Plus is if you don't like something about Google Plus, find the correct area. I mean, there's, of course, Plus, Google Plus, but there's also help outs and communities. And, you know, there is a profile for the various areas within Google Plus. And send them a note and say, you know, as a new photographer online, I would really love to be able to just have my profile centered on a teal blue box instead of having the blur. And if they get enough people saying it, they'll change it. That's, they're, they're still very willing to make the changes, so ask for what you want. We used to be able to use hashtag feedback. In, in a comment and sometimes that that was getting to them pretty good because they do monitor more than you think. They really They really are helpful. They absolutely do. They monitor everything. So do we want to start looking at some comments? Sure. Well, I have one, one from uh, Jenny Field. Good advice, Jean Layton. Makes me sad to see the ellipsis. Is that how you say that? Ellipsis? Mm -hmm. At the end of a tagline. Uh, the uh, parentheses dot 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 is not so great. Nice to see a succinct tagline without the ellipsis. And, you know, it really is. Again, first impressions are important. It, it just tells people, honestly, I've looked at this and I understand. You know, that's important to know. I like this one. Ah, Lori, yes. Circle count has lagging information concerning followers on their stats. It has me 200 lighter, not on the site, but on the hover card info. Yes, it seems to be about roughly a week of lag before it hits the hover card. Don't know why. Um, if it's crucial for you to have follower stat numbers for someone, absolutely go to your profile. 
But so far, I haven't had any brands asking me my follower count on Google+. And, and Lori, actually, if you hover over your hover card, your very own, or someone else's, because sometimes I'll, I'll hover on someone's and I know they have more followers, and it's saying, you have to hit the update. And if you hit the update, more t most times it will update it to the current. Yeah. I just love this one. Lucia is joining us and sipping the G Plus Kool-Aid. I love that one. Gotta, um, love gotta love it. Brooks had one. Did you see? Here we go. Gene Layton, which is the best practice for the profile hover card? To list the exact city you reside in or the major or metropolitan city closest to you? It depends on your needs. Um, for me, because my city, even though we're a university town and everything else, I am an hour and a half from Vancouver, BC, and I am two hours from Seattle. So if a brand is looking at me to attend a restaurant opening, Unless I'm already going to Seattle, love them all, love the invites, but I'm not doing four hours of driving to go to a restaurant opening. And for me, it's easier to have that information available to a brand right up front than have to do the email back and forth. Although I love to talk to all those PR people, it saves us all a little bit of work. And that's my interpretation. If you are in any way uncomfortable about saying your city, by all means, make it broader. It's it, For Google's purposes, they just want to be able to put a pin in a map, and that map is a pretty big area in a small space. Now, I tend to use the uh, area for mine because when I lived in New Jersey, it was a small town that most people would never have heard of, uh, so I had Philadelphia area, and that seemed to give me a broader reach. So if brands were looking for me, they might not know where Oakland was, but they knew where Philadelphia was. So in that instance, if you live in a small area or perhaps you don't want to give your exact location, that's a good opportunity. Now I have the Orlando area because, I mean, everybody knows where Kissimmee is, but actually Orlando sounds more... Uh, it sounds bigger, like more metropolitan, and I'm close enough to it that it's not a two-hour drive, so I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question I brought up is, do you know how to? You know how you have a plugin that shows your hover card on your website? Do you have a link for that plugin? Um, Wing Woman Productions is a blogger site. I have it redirected, but it is a blogger site. So of course, since it is in Google's hands, they have an automatic one. You can get a plugin, um, you, you can get the file, uh, and I, gosh, that's a little complicated. Yes, you can get the file, you can drop it into your WordPress, because I do, or I did have it on my WordPress blog, which is Gluten Free Doctor. Um, there's a tag. I will put it into my post after this event, because it's not as simple as I can speak through it. It's, uh, in fact, I think I actually, yep, I did. I took the hover card off of my WordPress because the hover card on my WordPress was making things go into a very slow update mode. So that's the other side of it. Um, Wing Woman Productions is on Blogger, so it's really simple. Yep. Now I do have the. Uh the badge basically is what the hover hover card is pretty much on on mine and I did have an issue with that Gene I'm glad you said okay. that and my uh, host was actually shutting me down yeah. continuously and yeah. I pulled him off and then I had my uh, the person that redid my blog for me Kita however she put him in I don't have the problem anymore but when I put them on for whatever reason, oh my God, it was taking forever, and they were they were just pulling me down because I was using all my allotted time <laughs> on these. Yeah, um, and that's the thing I'm beginning to notice that blogger blogs are really not as inconvenient or uncomfortable as they were when I made the decision to switch my blogger blog to WordPress, and I'm seriously considering moving back because it's so darn simple to make a post happen. <laughs> um, and I, I'm sure my web designer is screaming in the background somewhere because we've done a lot of work on my site, but it's far easier for me to post on my Wing Woman Productions than it is on my Gluten-Free Doctor 
So you're you're going to hear a lot of web designers screaming. I know. You know people I know. start moving back to uh, to Blogger, and and I totally agree with you. And I it always amazed me that with the power of Google, they hadn't developed a better platform and let everybody migrate over to WordPress simply because of the SEO benefits. So I guess they were just waiting their time, going, you know. Hmm. <laughs> anyway. I think they figure they're going to have people coming back because the SEO at Google Plus is really worth it. Yes. Um, I'm going to, this is Mark Seidel. Thank you, Mark, for finding it. The link to create a badge is uh, developersgoogle.com backslash plus backslash web backslash badge backslash. So please look for Mark's uh, remark in the event, and he's got that in there for you. Thank you, Mark. Really appreciate that. Here's one for you, Betsy Eves. I'm seeing in some hover cards, the tagline is a short descriptive sentence and others have a few keywords. Which do you think is better? You're talking to people. Have a tagline. Keywords talk to a computer. Okay. That's me. <laughs> That's my, you know, we're, too, we're still talking to actual people here, so. You got to remember um, that. that. That's what I think. You know, everything about Google is can you communicate, not can you keyword, can you communicate. Okay, so Biting Edge put up the same, the, uh, same link. There's uh, um, Orletha Smith, uh, besides Circle Count, what was the other Circle site? And that was Circle Scope, Orletha. Yes, Circle of Scope. Circle of Scope. And they are working on that to make it more user friendly. Uh, it has been a little bumpy. But uh, Christine DeGraff is working on that now, and she's helping. Yeah. Um, I think Circuloscope was actually doing a very big change of their structure, and it's coming in this year. Yeah. Um, hi, Kate. Kate saying, I tried to change my nickname as you touched on in session one, but I got a message that I was violating Google Plus's nickname policy. Can you address this and how best to work with this? Please, thanks in advance. Okay. Google's nickname policy is one of those important things to keep in mind. They do not want y your brand name as your nickname. They want, you know, if your name is Catherine, they want your nickname to be Kate. Or they want it to be something you're known as regularly. So they don't want to see brand names. They don't want to see hyphens because they assume nobody has a hyphenated name. I tried gluten-free doctor. doesn't work. I have to shove it all together. Um, so in the wonderful world of can I use my nickname to talk about my brand, I think the best thing to do is say it's not there. Um, and since I know Kate McDermott is known very prominently as Art of the Pie, she was probably trying some variation of that and I think Google looks at that as a brand name. And so that's probably why they shut her down. Now, I have seen some bloggers that use it, uh, use their blog name as their nickname, and it'll show up in parentheses, like uh, Tony Dash has Boulder Locavore. So I, I don't know if there is an instance when you can, can get away with it or not. I think if you throw it into parentheses, they let more go past. But if you try and put it up nickname as your name, I think that's where you get into hassles. And you get to choose as you put your nickname in. So play with it. If you get the warning, believe it. <laughs> yes. You know, it is not something to attempt to work around. Google will shut your account down. And I think they're back to shutting down more people again. I keep hearing it happening. So um, thanks for the clarification. Mine still says attended and works at. Am I doing something wrong, Michelle Lawson? Okay, Michelle, I have to guess that um, one of two things. Google is in the midst of a rollout, which is how they push new information out to the world. And you may just be at that end of the rollout that I've already gotten it and you haven't. Um, I would just try and structure a sentence that works with that information. That, by default there and then move forward when it changes and like I said they don't announce every change they just roll it out and you get to enjoy it then yes yeah they do do things in phases so be patient if you don't see it here's uh, one from Amy yes uh, chef Dennis Lay. here's a link to a great article with an easy to follow guide for changing your cover photos to best communicate your interests visually and she does give uh, 
the uh, link to it, and it's from Jenny Melrose, the Melrose family. So if you have any questions, you can check that out too. Okay, so Annalise, um, but what if you're setting up a brand page? I don't think it's inappropriate to set it up with my name and then the brand because sometimes people move on. How do they think about this? I get that G Plus wants people to communicate with people, not uh, companies, but it seems like a glitch. Okay, <clears throat> what we've been talking about is only in personal profiles. Brand pages are very different and I'm not sure exactly which date we move into brand into pages, but we'll definitely be addressing this then. On a page, they would rather have the business name and not the personal name, which is where they make the distinction. Um, yes, people do move on in business pages, and that's how they allow pages to actually have multiple managers um, in order to first stall that. But uh, I really, beyond that much, I, really, I think we just end up going off into a pages conversation. And is pages like the end of this month? Pages is coming up, I know. The 27th, it's pretty soon. I Because I, I remember seeing it when I made up the, uh, the post for it. Here's Brooks Walker. I found if you play nice, Google will play nice. Just saying. That's about yep. the rule of the world, Brooks. It's not just Google. If you play nice with most people, they're going to play nice with you too. And I have to keep remembering that I'm in the South now and I play nice all the time because being from the Northeast, I got a little edgy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, when using Circuloscope, use the templates. They work great. That's great advice, Adam. Thank you so much. Um, because, yes, the templates actually help you not have to reinvent the wheel. And I'm a big fan of that. Amy is saying that she had the badge and it was super slow to load, so she removed it. I've got to admit, I think it's one of those situations WordPress is not playing well with Google, and that happens. Uh, easy to read article. Can you j erase works at and just put your job title? As far as I know, the answer is no. You have to say what industry or company you work at, and you have the ability to put your job title in the second block, um, but it doesn't show on your hover card. So, there's that. Thank you, Gunta. I love each and every step and can understand. It should be explained slowly and clearly for all Google. Um, I believe Gunta is actually having to use the translate tool in order to read it, and I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. Yeah, Google Translate tool is a wonderful thing. You know, I have heard some people come commenting uh, the other day about they have um, comments on their on their posts, and they're in other languages. And and should I are they spam? Should I delete them? Should I report them? And you know, read them, translate them, and see what they say, and if they're appropriate, you know, just yep. uh, go with it. Here's Andrew Hatchett. If anybody's looking for information about Hangouts, Andrew is the guy you really want to talk to. Um, he runs a Hangout Helpers talk line in association with the Hangout Mastery Group that Ronnie Bincer runs. And this gentleman puts more time into making sure people look good on camera than anybody I know. He gulped down the Kool-Aid Kool hole. Love it, Andrew. Thank you for coming. Um, uh, okay, Jean Layton, how do you treat people who follow you but you find their hover cards creepy, pornographic, etc.? I have experienced some bad moments going to profiles to block people. Sometimes you can just hit X and they'll go away. What gives? Got to go back to YouTube to hear broadcast event page two crowded for good playback. Okay, um, gosh, JD, it's really simple for me. I go with my gut. If I clicked on somebody's hover card, and my gut says, absolutely not, I block the person. It's very simple. I rarely find anybody putting something that I have that reaction. When I see their hover card, I don't see their, them having much in their profile that I'm interested in. And yes, I block people regularly. And if somebody doesn't like it, I don't have to have everybody in the world love me. It's not my problem. No, although most people do love you, Jesus. <laughs> Don't worry about that. 
and it's it's worked well for me over the world over the time I've been here. Um, and I always remember too that just because someone follows you doesn't mean that you have to follow them. And you know if if they do are abusive. Like this morning, I blocked someone that had left a crude remark on one of the posts I shared to stop sharing that uh, poopy, okay? And and Google actually flagged it as spam, and I just blocked him. That way, don't worry. You don't have to see any more of my poopy, because uh, I'm not sharing with you anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I have to admit, I can't follow everyone who follows me back. I would go over the 5,000 follower limit. So, if you're not quite there yet, realize you're going to get there and the thing about who you follow is it needs to be people who are interesting engaging talking about topics that are interesting to you and people that you're getting information from that you want to continue to share on to your followers And it, that's what Google Plus is all about. Let's talk about real life. Let's talk about, you know, amazing work that happens in prosthetics or, or you know, social media even. You know, I, I got to admit, um, for all of us food bloggers, we're the fluff here. You know, we're the ones talking about cakes and pastries and feeling great eating gluten-free. But to the techies who've been here forever, we're the fluff, and that's okay. I don't mind being in that place. Not at all. I mean, because they take a break from from uh, doing all this stuff that they have to think really hard for and see our chicken wings or our cakes and, and just drool a little and run home. Remember, they haven't had lunch. so you know, Right, right. And then they come to our blogs looking for the recipe. Um, I think Roxanne is talking to you Chef Dennis about how to be in the South. Just smile and say hello or nod your head as you walk past people. I find that they want to talk to you too all the time, uh, uh, which is, is kind of a new thing. Yeah, everyone's friendly. Even the toll booth people will ask you how you're doing today and mean it. They're not just trying to move you along, so it's it's been interesting. Exactly. Mark Seidel, who has been here for a while and has gotten his own sense of instincts up. Another thing, I do not follow people who have no profile picture or about. Um, I use the, if they haven't changed their profile picture, they're just lazy and I don't need to listen to them round. Um, and especially if they're a blue head, I do not follow any blue heads. Blue heads are the people who haven't even put a profile picture in. And that's why we tell you how important it is because I, I still go to, to profiles, people asking to be in the in the food blog community and they don't have down that they're a food blogger and if I don't recognize them by name, you know, I don't know. So your profile, your picture, everything is so important. Yep. And Laura Williams saying, I agree, use your instincts. You have them for a reason. It's, it's okay to depend on them. Um, <laughs> Joe Ray is saying, Translate has enabled me to create good friends that I could not have any other way. I only speak Southern English. <laughs> um, let's see. Who's else? Got Here's Jenny Field made a comment. Thanks for being here again today, Jenny. I didn't realize that education showed up on the hover car, Gene Layton. Now I have another line on my car that tells more about me. Thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, and just so everybody um, who looks at my hover card, I have a stray line that I honestly do not know how I put it in, and I don't know how to edit it now. And I asked Stefan about it because, like I said, he's the hover card master, and he said, I have no clue. So we're thinking it's vestigial. Um, it's the gfdoctor.com right under my name. I don't know how I put it in. It must have been something I was able to edit back when I first did my hover card. And they've changed. And I can't edit it anymore, which is okay because it's my URL. Um, it's one of my redirect URLs, but it's uh, one of those things. And in my post, I explain how... Google sometimes, like grandfather's people, if you have a particular thing in your profile, you can keep it if you don't change it. And if you do change it, it automatically goes to the newest edition. So I talk about Ronnie Bincer having the five rolling pictures because he's held on to his 
profile when everybody had five pictures. So. Yep, he hasn't changed it, so he's he's still got it. We have some southerners. I grew up in the south and always say good morning, good afternoon when I pass somebody. I know I can tell now when I when I say that and people don't respond that they're either not local or they're just they're from the north. Mm -hmm. So Adrian Urban asks, where is the best place to write food blogger, Chef Dennis? I, I take a little different approach than Jean did on, on the tagline. And on my tagline, I have chef, culinary instructor, food blogger. Uh, I, I don't have um, more of a... a, a, a a statement about myself so I have that and I've also on mine uh, was allowed to put my work down um, and I put works at my food blogging community I don't have the actual place of work so that shows up on my hover card too now Chef Dennis has actually talked to people at Google so it's not that you've actually got that in that you've got that ability is it <laughs> I, you know, I think it could be the grandfather thing, like you say. It's just because um, I might have had it. Maybe they didn't change it. You know, sometimes, like, I still have works at and attends on mine, so they haven't rolled it to me. And you would think if oh. somebody was on the list, I might be on it. But Yeah. Wow. Um, that's I didn't expect to have something before you. <laughs> you um, so Biting Edge, which is a business, uh, you only need to circle people who are sharing and engaging. If they aren't sharing anything, then you don't need to circle. Just engage when you see them in comments. That's a really good idea. You know, Don't worry about every person who's talking to you. Nope. Engage with yeah. your friends and uh, make new friends. And, and engage. You, you really have to work at engaging. Don't expect because you left one comment or you plus one something or shared something that they're your new BFF. You know, it doesn't work that way. You know, so I've spent three months cultivating a relationship with someone that I wanted to connect with on Google Plus, and I, and I had far more followers than they do. So you know, you would think that you know they would be more easily you know to to make that connection, but you really have to work at it if if it's important to you, if it's someone you respect, if it's someone you want to make that connection with, and you want to follow, and you want to become friends with. So it's it's like anything else in life, you know. Some people just click right away, and you become friends. And other times, you really have to work at it. Well, and the thing about follower counts is that so many people are moving over to Google Plus, and they may have hundreds, thousands of followers on other platforms. But because they're new here, they're not there yet. But because they've got all those followers on other platforms, they're still trying to keep the conversation moving on all those other platforms. So don't take it personally if somebody you really kind of want to connect with doesn't respond to you rapidly. Keep talking with them. Keep commenting on their posts. And please, comment with more than fabulous posts. You know, read the whole thing, come up with some original ideas, and talk to them. You know, it's, it's the only way you're ever going to make the connection. And if you want to stand a chance at them responding, put their plus name in the comment. Yes. Okay, because they're going to get a notification about the plus name then. And it's going to be not an annoying notification. It'll be that someone is talking to them as a person. Okay, yeah. not just a drive-by. So. Yes. And we've got somebody here. Yeah, I need to get rid of the profile pic with my dog and his Christmas app within the next few days. Do it today because a dog is not a person and Google can shut you down. So please, yes. take, take two minutes and go change it to a person. If you want, it couldn't be you. But you know. yeah. And, and, you know, some of you put in some really great pictures, and that's that's great. But, I mean, I, I love the ones where people are, like, looking off or up or they're covering half their face or they're holding their camera in front of them, and you can't see it. You know, eventually it's going to catch up to you. You know, it, you can use it now, but just remember, you know, we, we told you, uh, when facial recognition becomes more of a fact, you, you want to see the eyes. So Google is going to make that, you know, important part of it, so. And Scott Scrocoff is saying, I agree, the profile image is so important. That could be a topic for an, a program. Um, we touched on it in our profile setup. And yes, just that one aspect of can, can both your eyes be seen? Are you visible and well lit? Uh, 
so many details because Google is going to facial recognition and the more they know that that's you the more likely your posts are going to show up the more likely that you'll find other pictures of you tagged correctly um, for bloggers a lot of us go to big conferences and we're inadvertently photobombing somebody's photo well if Google can identify you they'll tag you correctly and whether that's a benefit or not we'll all make our own decisions but you know if I'm standing in the background behind somebody I'd rather be tagged correctly than mistagged absolutely Here's a, a note from Mark. Hey, Chef Dennis, enough with the northern people remarks, regardless of how true they are. You know, Mark, I am a southerner by birth, so I think, I don't know if Florida is really a southern state, but it, it is a little closer to home than uh, New Jersey, where everyone will always say, yo, uh, what exit hey. are you from? <laughs> hey, Dennis, I'm a Jersey girl, so watch it. <laughs> and I'm not from an exit. <laughs> there you go. Well, I wasn't either, but, you know, that, that, that's funny. Now, I'm from Bergen County. I'm up by the George Washington Bridge. So. I know when you would tell people you're from New Jersey, sometimes they would slowly move away from you. No, it's only. Oh. Well, actually, what I get is, you're from Jersey? Because I don't sound like it. But I had a oh. mother who wanted to make certain that her children didn't sound like they came from Jersey. I well, can remember, fake it. But. Remember Joe Piscopo used to do that on Saturday Night Live? You're from Jersey? I'm from Jersey. I'm from Jersey, yes. Yeah, I managed to, yeah. Uh, okay. And I think this might be awfully, gee, what I'm learning is quality is not, I'm sorry, quantity is not quality. On G+, I get to make quality connections, not just like list likes. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You get to make connections with people who will want to hear what you're saying and share it. What more can we ask? Here's uh, Roxanne. Did we, we didn't cover this already. Did we, Roxanne, can we change our picture from our face to an image certain times of the year? I wouldn't do that, Roxanne. What I would do is take your profile picture, drop it into PicMonkey, add a hat, um, you know, scatter Easter eggs across the bottom, put in a St. Patty's Day shamrock, but I would not remove your face. If, you know, if you want to... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. Even Mr. Jingles, the the little bell <clears throat> that tells you about notifications, gets dressed for the holidays. He had on a, an ugly sweater at Christmas, and he had on 2014 uh, glasses for the New Year. But it was still Mr. Jingles underneath, and that's Google's choice, I think. Yeah, if you want to change something, change your banner. Change, you know, uh, make adjustments to your banner. You can put all kinds of neat holiday things up in there. You know, I, I routinely change my pictures uh, and change what I put up there. So, you know, that's not a bad thing. Okay. So we've gone over time again. What again. That? That's okay. That's okay. We're trying to answer all your questions because so many of you have reached out at various points during the week. So. Here's one again, uh, Catherine. Really, both eyes have to be seen in your profile photo. Yes. Yes, they prefer to see both eyes. So yeah, we've got a couple of people going. Oh, time to go get new ones taken. Here's uh, Kirsten. So Chef Dennis, the first stop on the way back from getting my hair done will be a full face photo, and to remember all the places to change it. You know, and that's also a good point. If you change it here, change it on Twitter. Change it on uh, Facebook. Change it around. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and um, because of the auto updates, sometimes I know if you change it on Facebook, it can change it on Twitter and vice versa. So, um, may I ask about names, please? I remember Chef Dennis said not to have anything like Adrianette Whole New Mom is my name on my profile page, but I have seen folks with something like Adrian Urban Whole New Mom. Is that? Um, kosher and yes it's kosher that's they're using the nickname uh, to get that whole new mom in there and with the parentheses it seems like it goes in so that's the way to do yep. it use, use the parentheses and get it in there yep that way you get the best of both worlds and you know you can also have like I said have a banner made with your blog name on it you know and that's the, again you're winning that way or if you're good at Photoshop overlay it on a picture and, and put it up as your banner you know there's a lot of ways around having your business name appear 
you know, so it's easy. And make sure you put the links, put it in your about section, put it where people can easily find you. Uh, and even in your work set, you know, a whole new mom. And that way it's there. People are going to recognize you and get to make that connection with you as a real person, which is really important. That's the, the thing about Google more than anything else is you want to be you, not behind your brand. You are your brand. And Google's kind of pushing people to be their brand. So since they're the biggest search engine in the world, we can either embrace that and move forward or we can... Go to Bing. Attempt to, yeah, go to Bing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bing's got its own interaction. When I was doing the profile, I was coming upon things that Bing is attempting to do like Google. So I think yeah. we'll see more and more interaction that way. Um, so, all right. Yeah. So shall we call it a day? Uh, I think so. I think we're <laughs> overtime equals engaging. I'm sorry. Oh, I know. Thanks, Brooke. <laughs> Brooks, sorry, Brooks Walker. Oh, and Leah is trying to come in. Is it still happening? Oh, well. Mm. There. Sorry, Leah. Kate McDermott, McDermott put a seasonal pie bat picture in her banner. There's what she did, which is fine because that the blur comes up behind you. So especially for, like, Christmas, put something with lots of sparkly lights in your banner, and you'll have those sparkly lights come up as Boken behind you. So. You can have a lot of fun with your banner. I mean, use that as a tool and yeah. uh, you know, put put all kinds of pictures up. Draw people in. You know, it's it's again, it's it's your per, your way of personalizing your page here. So take advantage of it, and you can change it as often as you like. And if you use some a photo editing program, PicMonkey or Photoshop or whatever, you can make a collage. So you know, you want to have one little square with your brand name on it in the solid background and then other pictures, you can do that too. Absolutely. The world is your oyster. Yes. Thanks, Mark. Great point. We are our brand. Yes, we are. And that's really the important thing to remember here on Google+. Plus. You are your brand. You are your brand ambassador. All right. Yes. People are going to come to your blog because they like you as a person. You know, not so much because they're attracted to your blog. Okay, I will go and do that right now. I was going to do the banner as well. There we go. Cool. Okay, so I think we've answered everybody's questions. Um, Chef Dennis, I managed to walk away from my calendar without knowing what next week's topic is. Do you remember? Uh, let me pull it up for you real quickly. I can You're do that. You're awesome. That's I forget. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Shared. Yeah, I should remember, but my, my brain is like a sieve most days. Oh, guess what we're doing next week? Pages. Is pages? Pages, pages is next week. Okay, I pages. was like, I started a post on pages. <laughs> pages. So for everybody who works the with the brand, yeah. Yep. Anybody who wants to have a brand page, that's what we'll be talking about next week. We'll do the basic setup. It's going to be like we did for the profiles um, event. But we're working on pages. And Annalise, I'll make sure to have that answer for you within the, the post. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thanks so much for coming by today for our blogger's guide to using Google Plus effectively. We're having a lot of fun with this. And I think you guys are coming around. And spread the word. All right, bring some friends with you. Uh, we want everyone to have such a great time here that they'll forget about Facebook and not even worry about the changes they're making. And don't let it affect you. You know, there's always places you can engage, have a good time, and really get some good viewership for you, too, at the same time. So. Yep. And if somebody missed it, they can always watch the YouTube. And I keep checking back on the actual event page for a, about a week after each event. So if there's a question, either plus mention me, and I'll get it that way, or put it on the event, and I'll see it as long as it's within the next week. So thanks so much for coming. And we'll see you next week. Have a great day.